Now we are going to talk about how to make a stable culture system to be able to improve our blastocyst formation rate. Uh, so in my talk, I'm not going to talk about anything, well, anything related with PGD. If we have to move to blastocyst biopsy, we need to have a really robust and stable culture system. Otherwise, we will reach to day five without blastocyst, not being able to biopsy anything. So, what are the success? Uh, uh, what, how we determine our success of our IBL, IBF labs? Uh, but usually we use the implantation rate that it's uh, published that is between 10 and, or 30 percent and it's not enough we need to improve this um, this implantation rate uh, today we are in 2016 it's too low so how do we do this first of all pay attention to every single detail an IBF lab it's built about details we have to control over 200 details. All clinical staff working to, uh, towards the same direction. I mean, we all need to have the, the same ideas, the same philosophy, and work following strict, a strict a standard operating protocols. A human IBF lab is not the place to make our minds and start doing research. Research has to be done in a controlled way. <coughs> For sure, we need well-trained well -trained staff. Uh, clinicians might do, must do perfectly their, their job to have a, a, an adequate follicular stimulation and a well-synchronized uh, uh, endometrium. We embryologists must be trained, highly trained, in, uh, in grading morphologically and selecting the best embryo or blastocyst for transfer, it will make a, a huge impact in our results. For sure, we need a robust cryopreservation program at the moment. If you don't have good results with vitrified embryo or blastocyst vitrification, you are in trouble because it has become our tool to overcome any kind of problem that we can face uh, with uh, treating patients or in the lab. We need to, to start reducing the, the number of embryos transfer because our goal is to have one healthy baby home. This is our goal, not twins, triplets with a lot of problems. Um, uh, we need to, for all those reasons, we need to have a stable culture system that we only will get it just implementing a, a really good quality control and quality assurance program. It will make you, it will make you change and improve. And of course, work as a team. This is a team work. We need clinicians, clinicians need embryologists, we need the, the cleaning woman, the receptionist, the nurse, every single body has a very important role. So we need to have long conversations, get agreements, and all move to the same direction. Why the IBF lab is so important? Because any kind of improvement that you can, that you can apply in your lab will have an impact in your results. But also, if you don't have a lab under control, program uh, results will be affected for these variations you have inside your lab. So, but what do we have? We cannot forget that we are not working in vivo. We are working in in vitro condition. This means that we have the poor embryo seated in a plastic uh, dish in an ocean of media covered with oil uh, with uh, <coughs> inside an incubator with a poor air quality of our uh, embryology lab all things releasing toxics, viruses, and chemicals to the embryo. So we need to be really careful. We need to add gas and wash uh, all our plastic uh, dishes, uh, preferably mouse embryo tested, and um, uh, endotoxins, and all the quality control tests test available in the market at the moment. Uh, we uh, 
media, culture media is one at the moment, is one of the safest thing we have in the lab because they go through very, very strict quality control um, test, but it's us the ones spoiling the media. It's very important the way we, we handle it, just taking care of our osmolarity, how we may make drops, how we equilibrate the pH, sequential or single, all those things have an impact. But then our worst enemies are the oil and the protein supports, because those are the less um, purified products we get inside our, inside our lab. Uh, due to the process of manufacturing. The, to get oil from petrol, they need to higher the temperature very high, very high, over 250 degrees, and they need to add a lot of toxic component to get out the mineral oil. And then they have to remove all those toxics, and not, they are not always removed in the same amount. And exactly the same with the HSA. The HSA has a human origin, and during the process of uh, um, um, do, uh, the, the deactivation, they, uh, they do it adding chemicals. And then they have to remove it, and they are not always removed in the same uh, proportion. And don't forget, oil and HSA work together. So your HSA can be perfectly good, but your oil can have some toxic. The moment you get it in touch, it, in touch uh, with the culture media and the HSA, the HSA will increase the toxic effect of the oil and the opposite. So you t it's very important. Everybody complains. Ah, oh, it's my culture media. My no, no. Take care about your oil and your HSA <laughs> first. So, Air quality, the air quality we all know at the moment that it's very important. It has been demonstrated since many, many, many years that the air quality has a very high impact in our clinical results in terms of pregnancy and higher in the miscarriage rate. So it looks like the level of POCs we can have in our labs has not a, di a direct effect in, in the early embryo, but yes, during uh, fet fetal development. So this is the reason why we need complete seal operation, operating room and laboratory environment. We need to have positive pressure in the, embryolo in the embryology lab and in the cryopreservation lab. That is where we have um, human embryos and gametes. An independent ventilation system, completely different machines for, for the operating room and for the laboratories. Gases used for, anest for anesthesia are toxic to human embryos. This is the reason why we cannot share the same equipment, and BOC filters and HEPA filters are mandatory. In here you have a really nice design or how your ventilation system has to be. Uh, we are not, I'm not going to uh, enter into details. And then we need to pay attention to another detail, is, and is the gases we are using. Gases, we use medical grade, high purified gases, CO2, for our incubators. But this is a nice study done by Cohen and co workers in 97, demonstrating that if you don't filter your BOC tanks for BOCs, you are adding all those uh, BOCs in high amounts inside your incubator. And then in here, several results done before um, filtering the air or the room uh, and, and after installing Coda towers or BOC filters in the lab, every, every single group uh, in here had a, a significant increase in the pregnancy rate unless the, Sp the Spanish group uh, that it was done at the Instituto de Sheus. They didn't find a statistical significant difference in the, pre in the clinical pregnancy rate, but they found a significantly lower miscarriage rate. So the end goal was exactly the same. <coughs> this is also a, this is a, this is also a study done by uh, Jacques Cohen. Jacques Cohen, yes, for you to, to be aware of looking here, so he analyzed this, uh, the amount of, of these four BOCs in different parts of the um, IB, IBF facility. Of course, you have to start for the outside air. It was the cleanest one, the outside air. 
the amount of, of this uh, for BOC was much lower than inside our incubators. <laughs> so this is very important. This is the reason why we need to be so careful. Because we, it's the lab, the equipment, the plas plastic, oil, temperature, humidity, who is disturbing our air quality. So, and then incubators, 37 degrees, hypersaturated of hu with humidity and full of plastic, outgassing VOC completely. So it's also a nice thing to uh, always work um, with um, CODA filters inside your incubators if they ha are old. I mean, incubators last for 10, 15 years. So they are accumulating VOC since the very beginning. We have uh, an, another very important thing is uh, to daily monitor of results. If we don't know how many pre patients get pregnant, how can we be aware if we are doing a good job or we are in trouble in the lab? So it's very important to be aware of uh, the, preg the, preg the, clinical, the, the pregnancy test from the, pa the cycles we did two weeks be uh, uh, ago, just to be able, if something is wrong, to be able to find it out uh, fast and not affecting uh, the rest of our patient. And uh, all those things, why? Because we need to have a stable culture system to control temperature, pH of osmolarity. But culture system is not only culture media. Culture system is every single thing we have inside an RBF lab, including humans. So we know all that we are overworked and very busy. The clinical results are related also with the number of personal staff working inside the IBF lab. <coughs> Thanks God, manufacturers have started making our lives easy because we need to control and to monitor the critical parameters of all, all of our equipment in the IBF lab. Before we were doing it manually, using many, many devices. At the moment, and since many, many years, we have in the market con a continuous monitor, monitoring of equipment, of the critical parameters of the equipment, uh, saving us time. Uh, this is the important thing. We need to, and they are much more uh, independent. It's an automatic thing. It's an, a continuous monitoring, fully automatic, so humans, we don't affect them. It's completely standardized. You build a network of sensors inside your, your, your uh, hooking all your equipment, and then you have an alarm in case of failure. Laura? Sam Samuel? <laughs> now, <laughs> failure. <laughs> Pump. <laughs> So the one we have at Embrotools, and we are quite happy with this, is the OctaClocker card. This is the device. Uh, and then to this device, you can, co you can connect over 200 sensors and over, two 20, uh, over 24 pH meter online to get the dynamics of your, um, of, of your culture system, uh, the, the dynamics of, of, uh, of your pH. And then it's, uh, it's very nice because you get every morning, uh, you enter your lab, you turn on your computer, and you get all that happened last night. You get the graphs. What happened in here? That it was not connected, the sensor. So forget about this one. But you know, somebody opened, somebody entered before I did the, control, the, the quality control assessment, and somebody had opened the door of, of this incubator. And you get that red line. And with other things. If something happened at night, you see it. And then they, it is stored the data that you can even store them in the computer for years. So you can always go back and, to, and do the analysis. So this is the pH meter online. As you see, the accuracy is really, really accurate. And then the nice thing of this pH meter online is that you measure the pH of your uh, um, culture system in a micro droplet covered under, under oil every 15 minutes, giving you the dynamics. So you have, this is the pH meter, and then we use these four well um, dishes, and this white dot is the pH sensor. So you add here 700 microliters of media, cover it with 700 microliters of oil, 
put it on top of the pH meter, and you will get a measurement of your pH every 15 minutes. If something gets wrong, it will be an alarm. Just for you to realize how long does it take to get the right pH with a, uh, in, your culture, in your culture dishes, we force the pH meter. So we set the pH meter dish with fresh media and fresh oil and put it on top of the pH meter immediately for the pH meter, meter to start measuring the pH in our culture system. It took the pH meter to go to the um, below 7.3, that is the pH meter we, we like to work, over 12 hours. So forget about setting up dishes the, the, the same today in the morning. Because when you will put your gametes and embryos in contact with your, uh, with your media, the pH will be completely out of range. It's us, how do we handle things? The CO2, we have internal CO2 sensors to measure the level of, BOC, of CO2s because you cannot trust the display. You open the door of an incubator and five minutes later, you look at your display, 6%. But inside, is not real. So we have these uh, CO2 sensors and we, we force the incubator and we open three times in five minutes the door of the incubator. It took the level of BOC 50 minutes to go back to normal. So door opening, it's very, very important. The way you organize your, the dishes or the cycles in your incubator can create you a huge amount of trouble. Temperature is also very important to monitor the inside temperature of your incubators because don't forget, until you don't get your temperature back to the settings of the incubator, incu the incubator will not start pushing CO2 inside. So if you have high fluctuation of, of temperature, uh, incubator will be missing CO2 for longer periods of time, affecting much more your pH. <coughs> real humidity, we have also sensors measuring real humidity. We work and live in Barcelona. Barcelona is a very humid city, and then we, li we like to have uh, to um, sensors measuring um, real um, Humidity, relative humidity, because real relative humidity is related with the outgas of BOCs. So if you have peaks of your, of your, in, in your humidity, don't get scared if your BOC sensor peaks, because it's an effect and you cannot control it, because we cannot control humidity. Just you try to not open the door of the incubators while these VOCs are higher. Of course, room temperature, again, room temperature shouldn't be never higher than 24. We need to feel a little bit chilly just for avoid contamination, fungus and, and bacteria and whatever. And also to not force equipment to, 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 to try to keep the temperature down. Now, we are really happy because we have this uh, Octax uh, Logangar BOC sensor that is uh, the measuring range is big because you can measure from 0 to 20 ppm. The resolution is very high. The, reactor ta the reaction time is less than four seconds. And you have a continuous measurement of your BOC be because things change. And the amount of BOC changes like this. So it has another many, and it, as far as I know, is the only BOC sensor online available in the market at the moment. Now you are going to see nice examples of this BOC. So in here you have the data recorded with this BOC sensor in four different labs in Europe. I can only say that the embryotools is the blue line. So we have a really <laughs> good quality of their air, Sometimes Nuno does stupid things higher in the levels of BOC. When he does cloning, you will see it later. And then there is another light blue. There is another lab that they do a really good job and they, 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 their, their level of BOCs is, very, is quite constant. But look at the, um, at the red. This is very funny. We, didn't, we were surprised because they had a very nice level of BOCs, but every day, 
at 6 p.m., bloop, they were getting a huge peak. That it was lasting for several hours. So uh, what the hell are they doing every day at 6 p.m.? They were closing down the lab and the technician was cleaning the lab with 100% alcohol in huge amounts. <laughs> and then, but then we got this blue, this dark blue. Of course, it's a, a very old lab. It has many, many years. So the level of VOCs is not as good in those embryotools has three years. So, but suddenly, they start picking, picking, and going out, up, 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 and then the pregnancy rate went down to 20%. So they were really in trouble, and they were not able to control the VOC levels. You know what happened? We finally uh, found out. They changed the soap they used for washing their hand for these drayer alcoholic um, solutions, and look, 20%. Uh, decrease in clinical pregnancy rate. Details matter. And then, when Nuno does all the, the cloning stuff, he has to clean all surfaces uh, with ethanol. The VOC sensor is in the embryology lab, and he does all the cloning things in a different lab. But the sensor is so sensitive that peak like crazy, lasting for several hours. So cloning stuff is done only in the evening. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we also have sensors for measuring the temperature in our liquid uh, nitrogen. You have the octax are completely wireless at the moment. And then you end up, as I told you, building a monitoring network, all your equipments, even the main power that they got to the, to the um, to, to one device, the Octax Lock and Guard. While you are in the lab, you have an audible or visual alarm. And when you are out, you install an SMS card and you get an SMS in your smartphone. Incubator number four, CO2 low level. And then you know if you have to go back uh, to, the, to, the, to the lab or no. This is for measuring the critical parameters. But then we have to analyze them. So for this purpose, we have this really nice app. It's called Reflections. It's a new app. Uh, so also you download it and carry it in. I check them when I'm traveling uh, around. And it's very easy. Uh, and you, it does for you the quality assurance of all your critical parameters. It's more efficient than, tra than traditional paper documentation. Both lay daily and periodic data can be assessed from anywhere. Easier to analyze instruments performance and fluctuations. And the app also provides with a summary of evaluation and graphical presentation. You design your lab. You design how your parameters, what do you want to check, how often. So you create your own routine, introducing all the equipment that you like. So it's completely open. You, you set up your, your data the way you like or you feel comfortable. And then you get uh, all this, the summary report and the fluctuation returns, reports and doing the, the, the important thing. And, hey, if you don't follow the rules you have set, it, it drives you crazy because you don't, it, it, yeah, it drives you crazy. You never get everything in green. But it's very easy. So the culture system, we are not going to talk to our, for our open, open culture system at the moment because we all know that we need to work under oil to be, or with a lot of oil to be able to control pH, temperature, and osmolarity. Usually we use Petri dish covered with overlay or under, uh, uh, underlay micro, micro droplet to control temperature, pH, and all. But for what? Avoiding to stress gametes, gametes and embryos, preventing future abnormal development in vitro. For, and how do we do this? Taking care of, each, of seeing every single detail. And look, just an example. Just for our an oocyte preparation, look at how many parameters, details we have to pay, to, to pay attention. Air quality, handling medium, handling dishes, pipettes, blah, 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 blah almost 20. If you add 
all the details to every single technique we perform, we end up with, with 175 uh, important uh, details that we have to pay attention. So if you add this, the details from the clinicians and from the patient, you end up controlling a lot of details. So <coughs> we have a tough work. The only thing that for now is not, we have still to do the quality control manually, it's our warming surfaces. Talking about in, in blastocyst culture, um, um, early embryos are very sensitive to changes in pH. From day three to day five or day six, in a way, the blastocyst is more capable of, of uh, regulating his internal pH, but then it becomes very, very sensitive to changes in temperature. So if we are going to do PGS, to have the right settings in our trophectoderm biopsy, in our warming stage in microscopes, it's, it will make a difference. We did a study comparing three different uh, warming insert for, for our microscope. Uh, this one is a heat uh, methyl plate that we, we have these nice thermobottoms that we said that we, we mimic the conditions that we are, when we are going to put our gametes, uh, embryos, or blastocysts. And with this head, uh, heated methyl plate, we all, all dish uh, was in between the comfort zone. We checked, we did exactly the same study with a, another brand, hidden metal plate, and we found out that we were able only to use the down part of the, yeah, the, the, the green and the yellow, the da, half down of the, um, of, 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 the me, me, of the dish, because the other, we were cooling down. And if the blastocyst gets, uh, gets cool, um, I mean, if from day three to day five, the temperature goes below 36.8, you get problems in your blastocyst formation rate. So, but then when we move and did the same thing in a glass, uh, oh no, yeah, this is, sorry, it's a mistake. In a glass um, heated uh, insert, we were not able to use any part of the dish. So it's very important, the warming stage of, the mi of your microscope, to be able to have a high blastocyst formation rate. And then it's n not new in the market. We, uh, it has been developed by, a, by a, a different company. So you know, it's like a cover that covers all your microscope stage, hidden completely the microscope stage, making your glass or your methyl insert much more stable. So it, it's a nice idea, this, this one, and I should recommend people doing trophectoderm biopsy to get one of those. You, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, showing you this one because Minitube has something like this since many, many years ago, but you have to manipulate your microscope stage. This, in this one is just to put the cover, knock it, and ready to go. Mineral oil, is, it can be. We need to work with a lot of mineral oil just to be able to maintain temperature, pH, and osmolarity. Oil, it, it's our best friend, but it can be our worst enemy. So we need to take care in the way we handle it. It acts like as a sponge, absorbing the majority of BOCs and toxics in uh, protecting the human gametes and embryos. But if you leave it, for longer periods of time inside the incubator or outside in your lab, it will hypersaturate of toxins, and in the moment you will put it in contact with your cultural media, will release all, the, all these toxins to your, to your cultural media. You have light mineral oil, heavy mineral oil, it's a matter of how, how do you like it, how you feel more comfortable. So now, t t talking about, we did a, a very long, it took us months, uh, re this research data <coughs> a, a study in which was the best dish. We, tr we tried to find out which was the best dish, the best uh, temperature for our heated surface. 
what which, which was the best droplet distribution and which was the best kind of oil. So we did it. We 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 use regular petri dishes and and GPS dishes. Uh, in here, I show you how it, we measure the in drop temperature, continuous in drop measurement using a fine uh, gauge thermocouple, and. Uh, we did uh, the distribution, it was a peripheric distribution when you put your droplets uh, t touching the walls, central or GPS, that GPS dishes have been developed for the culture of human gametes of em and embryos. So and then we, we control with these thermobatons the temperature of our heated surface and if more than 0 0.5 difference in the two measurement was found, we repeat the test again. So then we found out that working with GPS dishes, we were allowed to work in our comfort area longer periods of time outside the incubator. If, you, if we were using peripheric, we were able, and, and this is 60 millimeter dishes covered with 14 milliliters of oil. And we had only two minutes using a 37.5 warm surface. But then, if you are using a high warming uh, temperature in your warming surface, 38, 39, 40, stay away from embryo GPS, because as it touches directly the warm surface, it heats up your, your micro droplets. <coughs> we did exactly the same study for the 35 um, millimeter dishes, and we found out exactly the same, same, the same thing. At 37, the more stable were the micro droplets GP, uh, GPS. So it gave, it gave, you can work, look at your embryos, assess morphology for over 13 minutes, and the temperature is, is still uh, uh, up higher than 36, not affecting your uh, culture system. But it, it, those are just recommendations. You have to check. Uh, we, gi we give you the parameters, and then you have to decide which setup is the best for your lab. Incubators. Well, you are, we all know traditional incubators that they have not been developed for the culture of human gametes or, or embryos. We borrow them from uh, regular cell culture labs. So, but then, thanks God to the manufacturers, uh, lately they have, lately, since the 90s, mid-90s, mid they have started uh, designing and, man and manufacturing incubators for the culture of human gametes and embryos. You have this, uh, this kind of bench top, mink-like, you have this kind of bench top, in Spanish we call them sandwicheras, like a system or a MIDI, and you have this kind of drawer in, in a bench top incubator. That the, the big difference with the traditional incubators is that the chamber is very small. <coughs> you you can add uh, time lapse system, or you can work with time lapse system incorporated in a very nice uh, working incubator as the embryoscope that is the one. I can talk about. Look what happened if you measure the temperature inside your big, your big incubators. We mimic the way we distribute the patients, and we found out that in this big incubator, we couldn't use the lower, the, the lower shelf, because it was completely out of range, even at night. And the problem was increased during the day. And then we did exactly the same study with bench top incubators. In here you have the mink incubator that it works like a clock. Those are door openings in terms of temperature. Here you have the MIRI bench top incubator and you see that you get a lot of uh, fluctuation. And this is the IBF cube, the dra drawer incubator that it works and performs uh, really also very good as mink type incubators. 
And listen, look what, with, what happened. This is real. It happened to us in embryo tools. <coughs> One day, we were doing our routine quality control for temperature in MIRI, incubator and mink incubator. And then we don't know why, but at almost at 8 p.m., we had a power failure in our air conditioning system. So the room temperature went, down, went up from 22 to, 20, to 20, 4 degrees. And look, uh, mink, mink incubator, pam, 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 didn't react. Miri, whoop, had a big, um, had a big, uh, uh, in, the change in, in, the, 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 in room temperature impacted a lot Miri incubator. Why? Because they are not as robust and as mean type. The lid is very thin, so it, is, it easily gets affected just by room temperature. So it's very uh, important to be aware of all those details when you buy a piece of equipment. We did a study at TV Barcelona. It was a control, randomized study um, in, in, in egg donors, comparing the performance of the th three incubators we had there, uh, there at that moment. Embryoscope uh, was used just as an incubator. We didn't use the morpho morphokinetic parameters. And as you can see, poor big box incubators got really, really bad in this study because we found a statistical significant difference in the good quality embryos, a significantly lower clinical pregnancy rate, and a significantly lower implantation rate. So our recommendation is you use big box incubator as working incubators or for, for warming your media, your dishes, or your oil. But for culture, you use only bench top incubators. They are more, much more stable, and it will save money, because as chamber, it's smaller, you don't use such a huge amount of gases. But the most important thing is to have a right pH, and the right pH, uh, this is the, pH, the intracellular pH of, o o of oocyte and embryos, but we need to adjust the percentage of CO2 accordingly to each incubator. Not every single incubator. I always say the same. They are like different apartments. So you have to check at least once a week the uh, pH of your media in every single incubator. <coughs> And then also remember that the pH can vary due to alt the altitude of the lab to environmental conditions. So for instance, in Valencia, we are at sea level. So with a 6% of CO2, we are more than fine. But if you go to Mexico City, that is at 2,000 uh, meters high, you need a 9% to get exactly the same pH. So you cannot work with a 5% or 6%. You have to check your pH to be sure that you are having, a, uh, and then stay always in the safe side. If we have a mar an interval from 7.2 to 7.4, you work surrounding 7.3. And then you have a big interval just to try to avoid um, stress in your embryos. O2, low oxygen tension. There is no agreement in, 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 in the percentage of, of, of O2 <coughs> needed. But it's mandatory for the culture of human embryos until the blastocyst stage. I mean, you will get a better improvement in the quality of your blastocyst and in the blastocyst formation rate. And then at a higher CO2 concent O2 concentration, you get a fast recovery of your incubator, saving money in nitrogen. And you will not see any effect in your clinical pregnancy rate or in the morphology of your blastocyst. We did a retrospective study at TV Barcelona in our PG, uh, PGD program just to uh, be sure if O2 uh, if hypoxia was helping us. And we found out a, a significantly higher early blastocyst formation and a significantly higher good quality of our blastocysts after PGS. 
demonstrating in a way that if you want to have a really good PGS, uh, um, PGD, PGS program, you need hypoxia. Since the very beginning, since the oocyte, it's not enough to add it only on day three. Osmolarity. Osmolarity, nobody wants to talk about it. And it's very important. <laughs> and then we cannot do anything. Osmolarity is being set by the manufacturer. And then it's not a really good idea to mix brand media brands. Why? Because every single media brand in the market has different osmolarities. So if you mix media, you are stressing your embryos every time you change them from one media to the other. Swain demonstrated in, uh, in this nice paper in 2012 that changes in osmolarity affect mouse embryo development in vitro. And we know that in human, they do the same. What can we do to prevent changes in osmolarity? Aliquotin media, don't forget, culture media is 95, 98% water. So every time you take it out of the fridge and put it at room temperature, you are promoting evaporation of water, increasing the osmolarity of your media. So aliquotin, at least in our opinion, it's a, a good thing. The way you set up your culture dishes, of course, stay always uh, of warm temperature for setting up your culture dishes. Use cold surfaces, avoiding promoting uh, evaporation of the water. And don't work in, in, in Siri, two by two. If you set up 15 dishes at a time, you, when you have make all the drops and you start pouring the oil, the first micro droplets are bye-bye, bye-bye osmolality. So there is no need to rush two by two. And then you will improve your embryo morphology. And then sometimes, like loading the cryotope that we use very, very small volumes of media, we recommend to turn off the laminar flow to avoid uh, evaporation of the media. Talking about media, what can I say? You have single step, give the embryo everything and let the embryo, and the embryo is smart enough to choose the, the thing, the components he need, he, 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 they need in every moment or sequential media. Give them what they need in every single moment. Uh, we have at the moment all those protocols. We have the single step uh, protocol We're using single media in one step. We can use single media in two steps, changing them over on day three. Sequential is two steps. I, I like it or not, you have to to change over a new media on day three, and then just for dreaming, microfluidics <laughs> one day will be working. <laughs> and then we can all now, with all this time lapse system, work in an, interrupt counter, uh, in an interrupted way. So you use a single media, put your oocyte after, uh, after ICSI in your time lapse, and leave it there until the blastocyst. <coughs> so we did a study as, because the problem of changing the media on day three is not because uh, embryo is consuming the media. It, it was because the possible to amount of toxics oil had absorbed. So we were changing dishes, dishes because the oil, not because of the media. So then we did this, this study, also TV Barcelona, that it has been recently published uh, in Fertility and Sterility in an embryoscope uh, with sibling donor in a prospective and randomized way, just to see if working with single media, there was a need to change them over on day three. So here you have the design, we did the ICSI, two embryo slides were prepared for every single patient. We use an embryoscope that it's a fantastic incubator. It has UV light, it has HEPA filter, it has BOC filter, you can, you can, uh, you have, you can work with hydraulic gas mixing, it's a small chamber, clean, perfect, giving you very good results. And, <coughs> and then uh, we one dish, uh, the media was renewed, and in the other dish, the media was 
uh, not renew. Here you have the results. So um, um, we got no statistical differences in the two step or one step in terms of good total uh, quality good blastocyst in no in really in two step we got a 90 percent and in one step a 72 percent and then we didn't we also wanted to analyze the morphokinetics just to see if uninterrupted was better than uh, working in two step and we couldn't find any statistical significant differences. I like the embryoscope a lot because for me, it's a very good tool for quality control. So my conclusion, uh, other conclusion of this study is uh, staff working at TV Barcelona, they are really well trained because moving embryos around, they are not affecting morphokinetics. And then in here you have the clinical pregnancy. Uh, the clinical pregnancy, it was a 75% in two step and 70 in one step uh, with an implantation rate of 68 or, uh, in two step or 60. And then <coughs> we, it took us a while to publish because we wanted to analyze the outcome in light birth. And we couldn't find any statistical significant differences in, in birth weight or gestational aid in single tools or in, or in twins. And that's all. So details, details, details. And then you will be able to not stress your embryos, improve your blastocyst formation rate, and finally your pregnancy rate and your healthy babies born at home. Thank <laughs> you.